And now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help train you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. Now, many Christians assume that all death was introduced into the world as a result of Adam's sin. But is that what scripture actually teaches? Here to help me talk about this provocative question is pastor and astrophysicist, Dr. Hugh Ross. Welcome back, Hugh. Thank you. And I think probably this is a very common question. You've answered many times. So let's try to start at the beginning. Um, what is the key verse that often comes up from Christians that want to advocate for the position that all death started, um, was introduced into creation through Adam's sin? They bring up part of Romans 5.12. Okay. What does that verse say? Well, part of it says death came about through Adam's offense in the Garden of Eden, but the critical thing is to read the entire verse. Okay. Are there any other texts that they often point to? Well, sometimes they'll point to 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 22, because it raises the same subject. Similar although, question there. But, it was, but it's briefer. Okay. Yeah. What about the um, animal skins that God uses to clothe Adam and Eve um, in Genesis 3? I've heard that one as often an argument uh, for those being the first animals that were killed. Yeah, they would presume that because they were wearing animal skins after they had sinned, that was the first time that animals had died. Okay. So now let's talk about some scripture. We're going to get to the science in just a minute, but I know that this is a question that comes from many Christians. So let's talk about those scripture passages that might seem to go against the idea that all death came through Adam. Yeah, the entirety of Romans 5.12. Okay. Where it says death through sin was brought about through Adam's offense in the garden and how that death came upon all people doesn't say all life, says all people, and the only species of life on planet Earth uh, that can experience sin are human beings. So notice that Paul twice is being very careful to focus just on humanity. Now what is correct is that Adam's offense in the Garden of Eden brought immediate spiritual death to all of humanity. Because it says, in that day you eat of the fruit, you will surely die. Yeah, it's referring to spiritual death, how man's going to lose his relationship his intimate relationship uh, with the creator of the universe. Okay. That happened to Adam and Eve the moment that they sinned. And what we see in Genesis chapter 3 is that God brought physical death later. Notice where he sends two angels with fiery swords to block access to the tree of life, lest Adam and Eve would partake of that tree and be uh, eternally alive physically, but eternally dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. So God's actually using physical death as a means to deliver us from the far worse consequence of spiritual death. So Adam's sin plunged us into spiritual death. Correct. And, but Paul is very explicit to limit that death in the introduction of physical death to human persons. Correct. And if okay. you read all the way down to verse 19, Romans 5, 12 to 19, you see that it makes a distinction between spiritual death and physical death. Okay. So I tell people, read the entire text. Sure. So we have to be careful to distinguish between animal death and human death, physical death and spiritual death, and, and what is it that we're talking about in what context? And 1 Corinthians 15 also gives you the same qualifiers. It limits it to human beings. Okay. So when we're thinking about this, it's not a slam dunk that... The scripture teaches it very explicitly um, that all physical death comes through Adam. That's, that's kind of an inference that some people read into the text. Yeah, it's explicitly the opposite. Okay. So, so now when we think about animal death, the, the text again doesn't explicitly say that those were the first animals that were killed there in Genesis chapter 3. What does the scientific record tell us about animal death? Did animals die before humans? Well, we have oil in the crust of the ground. Okay. Where do you think all that oil came from? I don't know <laughs> if many lay people, though, immediately associate oil with animal death. Have you ever heard of Shell Oil? Okay. The company Shell Oil? That's because most of the oil that uh, we exploit uh, to drive our economy uh, comes from mollusks. Uh, shellfish, because uh, I mean, if you've ever eaten shellfish, they're very oily. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, when they die, that oil gets compressed and over time becomes petroleum, which we're able to mine and use to. And the sheer quantity of petroleum in the ground, the sheer quantity of coal and natural gas and clathrates tells us there has to be literally millions of years of animal death to explain the enormous quantity of all those uh, biofuels. And it's not just the biofuels. Uh, we talked about shellfish. They have uh, calcium carbonate shells. Well, that makes limestone. And there's 75 million, pardon me, 75 quadrillion tons of limestone in the crust of the earth. And the isotope evidence tells us it's biological in origin. So I think we need to really appreciate those of us who are new to the conversation. We might not know or be totally aware that all of those things you just mentioned are forms of life. They were right. animals that, <laughs> that lived, died, decayed, compressed, cooked, heated up, and, and compressed some more over time. And then we're going in there and harvesting those things. But all of that is very... Um, profound evidence for a lot of animal death happening before humans come on the scene. It's also profound evidence that God intends that we fulfill the Great Commission quickly, because these are bio deposits that we can harvest to rapidly launch and sustain the civilization technology we need to take the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ to all the people groups of the world. So I'm grateful for all that shellfish. So when we're thinking about talking to our non-Christian friends about this question of was there animal death before humans, why is that an important question uh, when talking to non-believers? Because many non-believers are well aware of just how much petroleum is in the ground, how much coal there is, how much limestone, how much marble. And so when they're confronted with this claim, that no animals died until Adam and Eve sinned, they say, who are you kidding? I mean, they know the evidence. That just sounds silly. It sounds silly to them. And it's like what you see in Acts 15. We should not put an unnecessary barrier uh, between a non-Christian and coming to faith in Christ. This is not a salvation issue. So why, even if you believe uh, that you know, there was no animal death. Why make it a barrier to someone coming to faith in Christ? That's a great word. I want to make sure to invite you to check out Hugh's blog, Today's New Reason to Believe.